Good morning. Today is Friday. Mm. <laughs> April. Sometimes I say I get April and August mixed up. Getting busy, too busy. Cognitive therapy seems like a good uh, thing to. It's not that I get it mixed up. I just like that's my go to month or the other way around. So just something to do with dyslex dyslexic. I think I was really slow to learn her as a child. Uh child development things. <laughs> I've I'm one of those students that would have to listen to something over and over again for it to make sense to me. Other people would catch on faster. I'm just different, <laughs> that's all. Uh anyway, here we go. I'm gonna have you listen I'm gonna post this uh video i'm gonna if you, i'm gonna listen to this so if you'd like to listen to it you're welcome to it it's about what is cbt something i'm really interested in is about our thoughts our feelings our emotions our behaviors how we connect to our own mental health spiritual health overall the way we uh, receive things and accept things for in our thought patterns and our word patterns or beliefs. All right, it seems quite interesting, so hope you enjoy it. I'll listen to it too. Making sense of CBT. There we go. Mental health problem. It can be hard to know which way to turn or what to do to feel better. Okay, let's start at the beginning. CBT is, and how you can decide whether it's best for you. If you're living with a mental health problem, it can be hard to know which way to turn or what to do to feel better. You might go to your GP, and one of the first things they might offer is CBT, which stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. It combines cognitive therapy, examining the things you think, and behavioral therapy, examining the things you do. The word therapy might make you think of laying on a couch talking to a man with spectacles and a beard about your childhood while he analyzes your dreams, but CBT is actually a very practical type of talking therapy which focuses on goals and focuses mostly on the present day and things that are affecting you in your life now. The theory behind CBT is that the way we think about situations can affect the way we feel and behave. It does this by dealing with how your thoughts affects your feelings and behaviours, and teaches you coping skills for dealing with different problems. For example, you might make a simple mistake, like say, burning the dinner. This might make you think bad things, and it might make you feel worthless and inadequate, which could lead you to do things like withdrawing, snapping at your family, or trying to avoid things which you think might go wrong. Or perhaps you've been invited out for drinks with some friends, and you start thinking negative things. This might make you feel anxious and scared, which might make you do something like saying no to the invite, avoiding your friends completely, or using drink and drugs to cope with the situation. Over time, whether it's years, weeks or months, this cycle of thoughts, feelings and behaviours may have happened so many times, it's become like a habit. You start avoiding situations more and more, or automatically blame yourself if something goes wrong. And the more you do these things, the worse it can get. A CBT therapist will help you break this cycle and figure out what sorts of negative feelings, thoughts and behaviours might be contributing to the problems you're experiencing. They will help you deal with your negative thinking and help you change your behaviour, both of which will lead to an improvement in your mood. CBT can be helpful for people with nearly every diagnosis you can think of, and can be delivered through one-on-one -on -one sessions, in groups, self-help books, online, or through a CD-ROM. That doesn't mean that CBT works for everyone, though. Some people struggle with it because they find it just too hard to talk about their feelings. CBT is usually quite a short-term treatment, and so you may find that your problems are too complex to deal with in the time. Mm -hmm. It can also be quite hard work. Your therapist will probably set you homework and you have to really practice the skills they teach you to see a difference in how you're feeling. If you don't think CBT is the right treatment for you, you should be able to talk to your GP about what alternatives there are. 
The MIND website also has lots of information about the different treatments that are available for a wide range of mental health problems. And MIND's info line can also talk to you about what you might find helpful. Very interesting. Now, if you put in CBT in your Google search, <laughs> look at me, you got all these. Uh, try to find a picture. Nope, not this one. How about we just bring up a CBT picture? Nope, not there. How about we go to Facebook and do that? There we go. CBT. There we go. What is cognitive behavior therapy? Right? So it starts with thoughts create feelings. And feelings create behavior, and behavior reinforces the thoughts. See, so <laughs> I'm not a mind reader. However, if uh, somebody's re behaving in a healthy manner, I say, "Oh, that's a healthy type of person. They think healthy. They believe in a healthy matter." <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. It's not that we're mind readers, right? We don't read people's mind, but by their behaviors, those thoughts that create feelings, those feelings that create behavior, and those behaviors that reinforces the thoughts. Like, oh, yeah. So if I say to somebody, I love you, but I turn around and just, <laughs> just want to yell at them, uh, a child or a sibling or a friend, a neighbor, would, they say, well, she's saying one thing, <laughs> but she's, uh, her words and her behavior don't match. Like, you know, her behavior doesn't match to what she's saying. <laughs> right? <coughs> Excuse me. So that's why I like to... Uh, study more and more about CBT, the more I'm tapping into my conversations here online through Jeanette's connection. It's like, yeah, yeah, my connection. I think it's, I don't know, GG something. The point is, <laughs> my YouTubes, but the point is I'm doing more and more of it. At first it was when I could move my, st <laughs> do some mini bike exercise, you know, that little bike, therapeutic bike just to get my arms and my legs going. At first it was 10 range of motion on my legs for about a month or two. And then I thought, oh, maybe I could try with my arms now. 10 range of motion movements with my legs, my feet, and then 10 with my arms, <laughs> you know. And that felt like a lot for me. <laughs> a lot of the energy was just draining from me just from doing those small exercises. <sighs> Call them any therapeutic exercise for some reason, right? Bike. Therapeutic bike. So, it's like, oh my gosh. Because of all the gain weight that happened between September 19 to 2019 to May to March of 2022, I've never been a big person, so uh, weight-wise. I'm not disrespecting other people who are struggling with those. That was a struggle for me. Real struggle. So I'm not judging people who have these types of struggles. This is my, as I was talking about my struggle, right? My thoughts of struggles that created those struggle, feelings of struggles. <laughs> they created my feelings, whether good or bad or indifferent, right? And... The feelings that created that behavior that said, nope, 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 no more than 10. And that was my second, second year of, 
when I started back in January of 2021, this is when I started thinking, okay, I'm going to start to... <laughs> then it's, yeah, cognitive behavior therapy. I started studying more and more about it because I used to study those things back in my mid-20s, right? And high school, going back to school, whatever, right? Uh, what do you call that? When you go back to school for your GED, two years was to complete my, my uh, up to grade 12 or 13, whatever the <laughs> certain people call 13. But anyways, I think it's in Quebec. <laughs> they call it grade 13. Do you go up to grade 13? Oof. Anyways, when I went back to school, I was like, yes, I can do this. Bringing my kids out, do you think I could do it today? <laughs> Getting my kids ready to go to, to daycare or school, you know, so they could arrange, make a frame for school, or making sure they had their lunch back, making sure supper was going to ready before I even stepped out of, the, of our, our house or apartment when they were little. <laughs> Getting them ready, their lunch ready, breakfast made and the lunch ready, and it was ongoing. <laughs> for a good three years during those years. This was back in the 1980s, right? Mid-80s. <laughs> so that was quite a... I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and <laughs> continue education. I didn't want to stop by grade 9 or grade 8. I wanted to keep going. And I wanted to learn the English language, not just <laughs> say, yeah, yeah, I understand, but not really understand. So... It was a real hurdle for me. <laughs> it was quite an obstacle for me, my thoughts and my feelings, to even think that would even be achievable. Man, when you jump those hurdles <laughs> and you do it, there's that feeling like, oh, this is me having faith in myself. This is me believing in myself. This is me recognizing that I do have strength and abilities and skills, <laughs> you know? And that kind of thing. It's nice to recognize those things about ourselves. So anyways, our thoughts create feelings. Our feelings create behavior. And our behaviors reinforces our thoughts. You know, that could be on either side, right? If I have negative thoughts, that creates negative feelings. If I have negative feelings, that creates negative behavior. And if I have negative behaviors those reinforces those negative thoughts, right? Now, let's look at it from a different approach maybe, right? So if I have positive, good, healthy thoughts, right? Because that's the, the first part there. The first approach is all about cognitive dissonance, right? Now, second approach is about cognitive awareness, right? So this one is... If I have positive thoughts or good, healthy thoughts, you know, you go, those thoughts create good, healthy, positive feelings. Now, those, those thoughts that create those positive, healthy feelings, those feelings create positive, healthy, right? Uh, self, uh, you know, t towards our behavior, you know, that that first approach was like, oh yeah, when I'm pissed off and I'm nervous, I'm just going to have a cigarette. Okay, for example, that would be the, the negative approach, the, the lack of self-esteem approach. Let's say thoughts create feelings, negative feelings. And what do we go, what's our go-to when we're feeling negative? Those feelings create that behavior, right? And instead of coming up with something that's healthy, a healthier approach to talk about things, we just go to the go to unhealthy behavior. <laughs> for those of us who are hurting, for those of us who are feeling traumatized, for those who of us who are feeling unloved and betrayed and shamed and disrespected, right? Those are the thoughts that create those feelings. So what do you think is happening to our system? 
our nervous system when we have all those negative feelings. <laughs> There's a lot of fear in our thoughts. There's a lot of anxiety. Thought anxiety. I say anxiety. What I mean by that is fear-based feelings which create the symptoms, right? That causes that physiology of ours or our body to say, yeah, I'm sick. Yeah, I'm not feeling good. Yeah, nobody cares about me anyways. Yeah, and that's a negative thought, right? That creates those negative, the, th the negative thoughts, naturally so, that create those negative feelings and unhealthy feelings, which creates that unhealthy behavior. <sighs> well, I'm to blame anyways. <laughs> I'm at fault for this and this and that. Like, you know. Some show we watch on TV, it's our fault. How is that? <laughs> How is that our fault? <laughs> you know, when you start discerning between like, okay, is this the truth or is this a lie? Right? The negative thoughts. Is that based on the truth or is that based on a lie? Right? And then the feelings that create that behavior. Am I lying to myself? When I go grab onto that, I don't smoke anymore. But let's say somebody in the present day, they go to that smoke or that joint or that beer, whatever it is that go to when they're having the, that negative, negative thoughts that creates those negative feelings that create those negative behaviors. All right. That also that behavior reinforces those negative thoughts. I'm still back on the first approach. There's two approaches to cognitive behavior therapy, right? The first one, like I say, like in plan A, this is what we go to, right? When we're fear-based or uh, survival mode, the four Fs. What are the four Fs? A lot of people would say the F, you know, fill in the blank. The four Fs are about the fear in flight mode. Fear in... Fear in fight mode, fear in flight mode, fear in oh, fawn mode, and then fear in, oh, there's four of them, <laughs> fear, fight, flight, fawn, I know there's a third one. Oh, yeah. Fight, flight, fear. Uh, so it's fight, fear, flight, f <laughs> fear, flight, fear, fight, fear, freeze, and fear, fawn. All those have to do with cognitive, cognitive dissonance, right? It's all about how we feel down about ourselves, about our flaws, about our imperfections. <laughs> about feeling disrespected, uh, about not feeling connected, right? There's another contact that just uh, sent me a text message, one of my friends, somebody that's on my friends list. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just saying that's okay to recognize what the difference between what we see good and what we see bad, <laughs> you know, within our own body. Because if it's all cognitive dissonance, what is that about? Distorted thoughts, distorted behaviors, distorted dysfunction, right? Dysfunctional behaviors. Uh, so it's kind of looks to the outside word or world or other people like we're being lazy or we're being lethargic or we're just being dysfunctional and we don't care to do anything about it we're sending that message that vibe that negative vibe even to our physiology or like oh my belly hurts today i don't want to do anything oh my feet are all swelled up today i don't want to do anything right what's the healthy choice right what's the difference between the healthy choices or unhealthy choices Healthy choices, <laughs> again, healthy choices are about, brother, 
<laughs> the healthy choices are about thoughts that create feeling, unhealthy choices, right? Those are the thoughts, unhealthy choices, unhealthy thoughts that creates those unhealthy feelings, unhealthy uh, feelings create that unhealthy behavior and that <laughs> behavior reinforces that unhealthy thoughts. It's like I have every right. This is where self-righteousness fall into, right? <laughs> and people quote the Bible, but it's totally <laughs> out of context, for example. That's a non-healthy choice, you know? Uh, not being, not resonating with others, right? I'm just saying, just do it my way, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so there we go. And this is where differences create chaos, animosity, uh, a feeling of feeling disrespect, so we got to lash out. <laughs> we got to, you know get away from a bad situation uh, yeah and get away from something that we is hard to confront or get away or freeze get into that freeze mode like i can't believe he or she just said that worse to me that i'm lying to myself how dare she or how dare he and this is where the cognitive dissonance takes place so this is from the approach of, right, unhealthy approach. Now the healthy approach is, ah, I'm going to have a good day. I am having a good day today. I will give myself permission to release all that, those negative things from the negative approach. One day at a time, precept upon precept, line upon line. And I choose to, to exercise or practice cognitive healthy cognitive behavior today which is what is cognitive behavior right what is my thought i'm having a great thoughts letting it go letting go of that negative uh, replacing it with a positive whatever has been a negative cognitive dissonant right Cogn let's turn that cognitive dissonant into a cognitive awareness, cognitive healthy, which is cognitive behavior therapy. So I think I've explained that pretty well. I'm going to keep working on my steps. Uh, oh, yes. I'm going to my mom's, uh, we're going to our mom's, uh, celebration tomorrow of life i'll answer that <laughs> afterwards i'm still working on my steps here so i'll answer that after and i'm only at 2600 steps so i'll keep working on those Whew. yeah yep I'm just going to pause. All right. Ooh. So, to talk, say something about my mom hmm. in celebration of her life. <sighs> yeah, I can do that. It's tomorrow. Saturday, April 22nd. <sighs> yeah, tomorrow. Uh, I may not go in the front if it's anybody's feeling offended, though, or, you know, why does she get to? Um, I don't know, you know. I'm not trying to talk over anyone or disrespect anyone. So, yes, I've been working on this cognitive what is cognitive behavior therapy, right? It's recognizing the good in ourselves, recognizing that value we have about ourselves, recognizing or being aware there's good in, in us, in each and every person in our lives. And it's kind of hard to do that, though, when all we do is 
focus on the cognitive dissonance. Well, right? Now, to look at our fears and resentment, and that's uh, not necessarily a bad thing because then we're recognizing our own behavior. What makes me be the way I am <laughs> when I, uh, oof, I'm upset and I see things from a different, right? Um, I perhaps come across as a pessimist <laughs> or a very negative person. That has to do with my thoughts. Oof, right? Oh, wow. Cognitive behavior therapy. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes yielding to the fruit of the spirit for me. Like, you know, what is love? What is peace? What is compassion? What is awareness? What is truth? <laughs> you know, divide the truth from a lie. Divide the, you know, the purpose from resentment and fear. Hey, this is a purpose. I'm here for a purpose. <laughs> a good purpose. You know? Ooh. Let's see how many, so I'll do another 1,500 steps. So I'll do 1,500 steps with my CBT study here. And then I'll just do the remaining. That will bring me to halfway to my steps for today, my daily <laughs> steps for today. And then I'll continue doing them later as I work on my list of fears and resentment. List of fears and resentment, that sounds so negative, doesn't it? But really, it's about recognizing the cognitive dissonance, recognizing the negativity, recognizing the, the flaws, if you will, the imperfections, the non-negotiable, and bringing it to the table, right? Manner speak and just say, like, okay, those are all the cons on my pros and cons list. Those are all the negative on my positive and negative list. <laughs> right? So let's look at them. Yeah, it looks pretty messy. But let's take a look. Let's be aware. Right? Okay, that's my stuff. Oh, that's not somebody else's stuff. That's mine. I own it. <laughs> right? That's my baggage. Right? So learning a little bit more and more to uh, what is my stuff and what is somebody else's baggage and we're not playing the blame game anymore but we're looking at the real issues at the real topics not looking for someone to rage on or <laughs> you know just looking and saying hey wow I've been quite hard on myself most of my life. I learned that from somewhere, right? I've always been like a go, 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 type A personality. <laughs> always doing something from some, for somebody else. Because someday, in a sweet by and by, good things will happen. Healthy relationship will take place. <laughs> so yes, it takes a lot. When people's heart has been broken, it's hard to pick that back up, to pick ourselves up back up and pull up our socks, you know, and keep going. Uh, we all have poor experiences. Well, I can't say all. Forgive me for saying that. Well, we all experience things that are not always in the best, our best interests or the best interests of 
the people that we love uh, how do we how do we come out of that depression how do we come out of that uh, fear base or moods we can change that mood it's possible <laughs> all things are possible to those who believe right Oof. now i'm not saying fantasy based things right fantasy unreal uh, that's again under the cognitive dissonance right limerence fantasy obsession uh, degrading or self depraving uh depravacy where we're just not yeah that's all shame-based stuff so what we gotta do well, what i'm doing now is going to that yes my thoughts creates feelings my feelings creates behaviors and my behavior reinforces those thoughts right this is a cycle of life healthy patterns you know cognitive dis dissonance is about rumination ruminations where that bad story keep repeating itself over and over again like the waste, worst day cycle right that's the the part of the brain whether it's unconscious subconscious limbic right it's a part of the brain that's if you were to look at it you know like, oh my gosh right there's studies that person's went through a lot of trauma or that person went through a lot of have struggles with learning abilities or you know it goes into that category of feeling disabled disabled you know again it's not judging the person it's what's going on all right and cognitive behavior therapy is connecting through to or through values what's negotiable what's not negotiable what acceptable what's not acceptable what's true and what's a lie what's a pro and what's a con you know so you don't end up being connected to somebody that's the same relationship as before as before <laughs> as before it, towards the unhealthy relationship where there's barely any communication but it's based on falseness <laughs> on lies on untruths because perhaps we overcommitted to something or the other person overcommitted to something there's a sense of cognitive dissonance there you know and this is where the shouting and the screaming and the inappropriate behaviors and words and somebody gaslighting right your reality is being in question after a while it was done from other people but you start doing it to yourself that's what's called cognitive dissonance now cbt is all about self-awareness self-love self-respect right and this is why i like to study this because <laughs> uh, since i've been doing my fears and resentment list got into it again from october 25th to 2022 to currently every day it's like oh so i can look at that fear i can look at their resentment whether it's mine or see it in others i still can look at it and say oh this is like a real true self-discovery process not about judging others or criticizing others or condemning others it's about us learning how to let go <laughs> of that critical condemning <laughs> uh, critic that voice that is whew, where did that come from right so yeah so you learn you know true healing starts at home within our own spirit and soul and body 
uh, if we don't see it in ourselves, then we go and work as a doctor or as a nurse somewhere or, you know, healthcare worker of any kind. But we don't see that healing in ourselves. How are we going to see it in others? If we don't see that forgiveness in ourselves, how are we going to see it in others? If we don't see that love within ourselves, how are we going to see it in others? And if we don't see that respect within, how are we going to see it in another, right? So this really starts at home. Cognitive behavior therapy. I heard it on one of the one YouTube channel I was listening to, and I guess she kept saying CBT. That's what I do as a therapist. It's like, CBT, that sounds very interesting. It's about looking at ourselves, doing some reflective work, whether it's in the mirror or something within, looking at the distorted mirror and say, okay, oh, that's based on a lie. Well, I'm going to start giving myself to tell myself the truth. It's not about denial. When I give myself a compliment, it's not about denial or on forgiveness. It's about forgiveness. It's about being thankful, truly, truly being thankful and letting go of that negative, whatever it was, and start looking in the mirror the way God sees us, right? The way God sees us. We have a healthy relationship with God. We want to look at ourselves the way God sees us. Now, if we don't have a healthy relationship with God, <laughs> well, then maybe we need to start working on our own uh, perceptions about things, right? And let go of the God thing for a while and just really, really, really fo focus. I'm not saying kick God out. That's not what I'm saying. You know, don't hear what I didn't say. But as I'm saying is, from my own experience, when I welcome God into my life, no matter how things seem to be falling apart around me as a child, <laughs> I just, my focus was on God is here to help me. You know, God is here. For me, that's how it worked for me. That was my connection. And those times in my periods of life where I didn't feel anything, didn't feel, didn't remember those those problem, those situations, there are probably situations that I experienced that was too much. <laughs> or, you know, it could have been the same for my siblings. You know, when they say, we don't talk, oh no, I never talk about that period in my life. This is too much. It hurt too much. And, and if we dare talk about it as children, we get in more trouble, right? So we learn how not to talk about it. So that's called, again, it's part of cognitive dissonance. You know, those things that were that we were that we were taught, that was always taught to the people that were around us and raised us, right? It doesn't mean that they were at fault or they were to blame or they were to shame or they were to be called out as a hypocrite, liar, or manipulator. No, they're human beings. <laughs> they're not robots. They're not three-headed monsters. They're not zombies, right? They're human beings. And when we can no, cognitive, that would be cognitive, uh, right? Dissonance. If we didn't, if we started, <laughs> we looked at ourselves th the opposite way than what we actually are. We truly are not monsters. We actually are not abusers. We actually are not liars. We actually are not manipulators. We're actually not gossipers. We're actually not gaslighters. But really, who are we? We are human beings with real feelings. All right? With thoughts that we can process, which creates our feet, processes our feelings. And then our feelings create behavior. And the behavior reinforces those thoughts. So when somebody says, hey, what are you thinking about? You really don't want to say what you're thinking about when you're having a bad day. <laughs> it's none of your business, right? All due respect, this is a, in the thought world, right? We don't actually say it out loud, especially if we're at a church organization or <laughs> a workplace, right? 
we can put composure. But there's a time and a place for that, right? Through meditation, taking time to yourself, whether it's 15 minutes a day, whether it's 15 minutes twice a day, whatever you feel like you can handle throughout the day. Some people it's once a week, right? It's wherever you know what you can handle, you know within your own physiology what you can handle and what you cannot handle. And as you learn that about yourself, you learn other people are the same way. There's things they can handle and then there's things they cannot handle. And all in all, we really need to be true to ourselves, our self-value, self-respect. And if we feel it, there's a dissonance there, okay, time to work on that. A little bit here, a little bit there, acknowledging our own strength, weaknesses, perfections, imperfections, something we're excellent at, at and something we're not so excellent at. You know, and it's okay to be yourselves, to be your true authentic self, not based on what somebody says we are, but based on what we know we are. Yeah, I'm a good, decent person. I help people when they need it. Or, you know, I would give the shirt off my back if somebody needed it. Of course, you don't do that literally. It's a metaphor, right? So, and now I'm learning to say, okay, I need my me time. That's okay. <laughs> you have some time to yourself and I have some time myself. And then we can come together and talk about this. There's no need to fight. There's no need to come off as accusing other one another for things that we have no control over back in our childhood. When kids, boys were fighting over Tonka trucks and girls were fighting over hairbrushes, you know? let that go Oof. ah wow this this walk is really helping me oh i'm gonna make it to five thousand like i said and the rest the remaining five thousand i will do and write out a list of fears and resentment probably going to be fears and reset the fears the resentment and the cognitive dissonance. <laughs> and then, you know, that would be the cognitive dissonance. And then, the cognitive behavior therapy, CBT. All right, and I'll talk, I'll just write about it more. And of course, it's all here in the audio, most of it. Oof. Anyways, as my mom and dad would always say when I was growing up, God is good and just. <laughs> when I wasn't feeling God, my life was good and just. <laughs> I wasn't feeling it a lot of times, but he would say, God is good and just. Remember, oh yeah. <laughs> so, just saying, if somebody's pointing out at your bad behavior, they're probably hurting themselves, right? Hurting in a way, not so much about self-harm, but hurting they're grieving themselves. It's okay to grieve and learn about the grieving process, right? When it comes to the grieving process, a lot of it feels like it's off. I shouldn't be feeling this way, <laughs> right? Whatever feelings we're feeling, we shouldn't be feeling this way. We have a right to our feelings, our emotions, whether we're crying out loud or whether we're finally taking a deep breath that that person is no longer suffering right? Just saying, God is good and God is just. Remember that on your journey today, on your daily journey, on your healing process, on your growth process, whatever it is that you're experiencing and you're, it's a journey. Life is a journey. May they be good experiences more and more and less and less bad experiences. God bless.